Hello, Indo sisters and supporters. Welcome back to K and K Real Talk. We are so happy to have you with us. If you haven't met me yet, I am Kenny King here with my lovely co-host Kristen McCrovey. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Um, and so today we're coming at you. Kristen is uh, with Endometriosis in Me. If you haven't met her yet, which that's probably how you found this whole. K and K Real Talk anyway, but I just want to throw that out there um, that you can find her at endometriosisandme.com as well as all the other places um, that you have access to where she's there to support you. And then me, I am uh, the founder of Kenny Rochelle Coaching. I am a health and wellness coach specifically focused on women with endometriosis. So we're so glad to have you here today. We're talking about a topic that I know is very, um, it's a topic that can be hard to talk about, um, but we see this come up so much in, in messages and in the group and uh, with personal clients that I work with, and we see this in the endometriosis community, and um, we're talking about depression, and there's such a prevalence around, well, first of all, just out the gate, a lot of times we're seeing this shift, but I know that there's still a lot of stigma around mental health. Like a lot of times people are afraid to say that they need help in this arena. And that's just anyone across the board. And so first of all, we're here to say in our platforms, we're here to support you. So please, please, please don't be afraid to chime up or chime in, chime up and just say, you know, I'm dealing with depression, I'm dealing with anxiety, I'm dealing with any sort of um, mental health issue because your mental health is is such a huge, um, what's the word? I wanna say proportion, but that's not the right word. But um, priority. yes, it's a huge priority. Thank you, Kristen, it's a huge priority. It's so important to your health. You cannot have, you cannot maximize your health, your physical health, your emotional health, your any aspect of your health without considering your mental health. And sometimes that's as simple as looking at mindset and other times it's not that simple. It's so common for people with chronic conditions and chronic pain to experience major depressive disorder, anxiety disorder. We're gonna to focus today on depression. Um, but don't worry, we'll be talking about anxiety coming up in future episodes as well. So, um, yeah, this is, these, these, I don't necessarily want to say they go hand in hand, but I do want to say, please don't be surprised if, if you're feeling, um, challenged with your mental health, if you're feeling uncertain about whether or not you're struggling in this space, please don't be afraid to say something and reach out for help because a lot of times people think, Reaching out for help is saying there's something wrong with me, especially when it comes to therapy, counseling, um, it, that area. And I'm like, I'm the first person to say, like, I think that everybody in the world could benefit from having a counselor and a coach. Like if you got a therapist and a coach on your side, you're unstoppable. You're going to go, you're going to be able to move through all the stuff that you need to move through to create better for yourself. Um, but a lot of people have a really hard time with even talking about therapy. So um, there are so many different ways to support yourself in this area. So Kristen, what I'd love to do is start with, can you share a little bit about your, um, your history and your um, mm -hmm. view as far as depression? Um. <clears throat> for depression, I was diagnosed with depression before endo. Um, so I had always had weird cycles that were actually really short and really painful. And they were pretty much on schedule because of birth control. Like I was on birth control after my first period. So with depression, I would say like... As a child, even my depression started just with the situation with my mom and she's mentally ill herself and has drug problems. So I think that the, uns the instability with her really like 
affected my emotions too and like that gave me depression when she wouldn't come through for something um my parents split up when they when I was like two so um it's always been like a back and forth kind of thing with two separate sides so I think it started then but it was like manageable as a kid because you don't really have any other stresses other than like your home life and like it I mean like bullies at school and things like that but overall so I would say that like my actual depression when I was diagnosed and medicated was my last year of high school um I kind of just like freaked out like I knew I was going to college even though I didn't really know that's what I wanted to do and um I didn't know how I was going to be in like just the big change of leaving high school I just like freaked out um I got like really depressed and like I started missing a bunch of the end of high school which luckily it was the last year so it didn't really matter um and it's like you just like can't you feel like you can't pull yourself together like I would sleep all day so easily I would make I would get up to go to the bathroom um with like eating habits um my eating habits with depression are really weird like I will go from eating overeating excessively to then eating nothing and then that like once I start eating nothing that's like the depression sinks in and you're sleeping all the time and you just want to cry and you just feel sad and sometimes you don't even know why like I've had multiple times where I've just like been like really sad and crying and like my boyfriend will be like what's wrong well like there has to be a reason and I'm like I don't know I'm just, I'm just crying <laughs> and and like with depression and endo together you like oftentimes you feel like you're a mess like I like to call myself the hot mess express and <laughs> and I really feel like sometimes I am like I just out, like out to lunch when like all you can think about is your pain and your sorrow and you get wrapped up in it and like nothing else matters so you're just like I'm, I'm just sad and like it's like you can't see anyone in front of you you're just in it yeah um after that I always kind of like struggled I've always struggled with like on and off depression kind of things like waves and definitely my uh endo diagnosis threw me off I mean the whole situation with my cyst rupturing was really scary to me because I didn't know what was happening it was extremely painful and like that's pretty much the only time I had gone to the ER really for anything other than I knew what was wrong mm -hmm. and um it just like even though before then I knew in my heart that I didn't want to have children I still felt like my choice was being taken away it's really that choice because we have so many choices we feel as humans we should choose everything we should be able to choose everything in our lives ourselves which life is not like that and even though I didn't want children because that choice was being taken away from me I'm like hey what's happening here you're taking something that well I wouldn't say I hadn't decided I really never liked children lots. I feel bad but it's not my thing and I can't have them so in that way I'm lucky but for the people who do have them that is that for the people who do want them sorry that is the big factor where they get depressed is the infertility and the, just the process of trying to get pregnant and whether successful or not it's emotional with hormone treatments and things and 
like we just it feels like sometimes the littlest thing can just set you over the edge and then you just dive right back into that depression and it's hard it's super hard to like keep yourself positive when you're in pain you're tired you feel like you're dragging your ass every single day like how are you to be positive but you can and it's really hard and i like totally i've i've been kind of like depressed lately and i don't even know why um i think it was like the whole i had to move in such a short time period of time to a different city and it was kind of all like really fast so i think that i've just been kind of like digressing from that and like i'm so behind on my reviews and and blog posts that i want to write for you guys and like we we feel it too we feel what you feel we're just we're real people and you and then you get so behind because you're feeling shitty that you feel more shitty <laughs> so it's literally a vicious cycle and breaking out of that is so hard mm -hmm. yeah i i used to call it um kind of like dancing in and out of the shadows and um i recently called well i'll i'll hold that but that's that's a little bit what it's like i think and and so i think for some because what I do want to share is there are different ways to a experience depression, just like there are different ways to experience everything. But, you know, clinical depression, when you're diagnosed with like major depressive disorder, some people are like, oh, there's no stimulus. You're just missing chemicals, which can be true. Yes. But it can all, it's also true that situation, like situations will occur or chronic low level stress then builds up into this space like you have to it's there's sometimes a thing or a series of events or situations that cause a person over a, a series of time to have less of what they need chemically in their body to where, yes, they're missing the, uh, the dopamine, the endorphins, the serotonin, like all of those feel good chemicals. And this can come from different places. This can come from living somewhere where you don't get a lot of sunshine. This can come from seasonal depression that's associated with memories of loss in the past where your physical body goes back through it, even though mentally and emotionally, you actually feel okay. So like you can be okay and not be sad about anything at all and kind of like a wave of it will can hit you where it's just like you were saying where you're like I don't even know you know and sometimes and that you know what and, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say this um, that's because the body never forgets so there's a lot to be sad about things that we've gone through in the past and their timing and sometimes our body is like trying to prepare us for the thing again because it remembers, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. there are so many different ways. And mine actually, uh, Krista, my story is a little bit like yours in that my depression diagnosis did come before my endo diagnosis. In fact, my even my symptoms, my depression symptoms, they came before I started experiencing um, endo symptoms. And I was about, um, about the same time, actually, I, I, well, my diagnosis came about, I was 17 when my uh, major depressive disorder diagnosis came. And that came along with insomnia and anxiety and some other things. And so, you know, this came from living a long life of hardship. My, my childhood was not easy at all. And it finally got to a point where I could not do things like brush my teeth or brush my hair. Um, I was telling this, I'm so sorry about that. My dogs are kind of having a war, I think, with the, <laughs> with the neighbor dogs. So um, 
So hopefully they'll calm down here in a minute, but they keep starting back and stopping. So I was actually, I did a workshop the other day and I was telling this story and there was this moment for me where I, I'm trying to get ready for school and it's so hard. Like it's physically so hard. I'd lost a lot of weight because I wasn't, I would not eat unless somebody made food and put it in front of me. I was sleeping all the time. Also, I was the doctors had put me on a few different types of medications. And with me, I actually got worse with the antidepressants and the sleeping pills and all the medications I was on. I got progressively worse to the point where I was then um, hospitalized for 11 days. And the moment before that, it, it was, I mean, I was looking in the mirror, I'm getting ready for school. I'm like white and pale and I have to rest my arm. I'm brushing my teeth and I have to like set my arm down on the sink because it hurt to hold it up. My, I was physically wasting away. And at this point in my life, I knew, all right, Kenny, you are like, this is not, it's not an option anymore to like go forward like this. You've tried all the, you've tried the medications, you've tried all these things. And which is why I decided to be taken out of my home situation and to be in a hospital for a little bit so that I could try to like reset my body because I was li literally withering away. And for me at this point, this was life or death. I mean, I had been experiencing it for such a long time that I think I, that was my, it was my breaking point. I knew, okay, you are fighting for your life. Something has to change. And for me, this was probably the, this is actually why I ended up in wellness was my experience with this because, um, I was removed from the situation. I had a moment, but after I went right, I went right back home after that 11 days. So I went right back into a situation that there was a lot that I could not protect myself from. And, you know, as a kid, I think you have it in your brain, like, oh, well, well, at least I had this in my brain. Oh, I'm going to turn 18 and I'm going to be able to, I'll have my whole life in front of me. So I just got to make it, you know, and like, I just got to make it. I just got to survive. But I think what a lot of people don't realize is when you're dealing with major depressive disorder and you're in and out of something that comes like that, that comes in waves or that'll hit you out of nowhere, or you're not really expecting it. Um, it's, it can get easier and easier. Cause I'm here to tell you today, like literally since I came back out of the hospital, I have not, um, well, I came back out of the hospital. I don't suggest this, but I moved somewhere and I weaned myself off of medication. I do not suggest coming off of medication without doctor guidance. I did that because at, at the time I moved, I had limited income. I did not have any insurance and I didn't know what else to do for myself. So at that point in time, I, I just did that, you know, on my own. And so, and that was really, that was a tough withdrawal. I mean, I was like, you would have thought I was a drug addict, like the, the bed drenched in sweat, tremors, all sorts of things were going on with me and with my body. Um, all that being said, it is possible. And I just want to share this tiny tidbit uh, because we've done, we've done these episodes on self care and we've, you know, we're, we talk a lot about what you can do. And I am here to say like the whole reason I started in wellness was I started realizing as I began to take care of myself via nutrition and movement, all of a sudden I was able to better manage to where now it's been 14 plus years and I haven't had, I haven't taken any medication, any prescription medication for depression, for anxiety, for insomnia, for any of it. And by the way, that's not a dig. If you're on medication or if you believe that you need medication, please talk to your, like talk to your doctor. The medication was making me worse. I got progressively worse. I was not getting better. However, I've also been in a scenario where um, I've had a client who I love deeply and dearly and sent her straight to her you know, her counselor and between her counselor and her and her doctor and, you know, her whole team came together. She started taking some medication to take the edge off and to help her level out. And she and her doctor and me and her counselor, we were all in communication about at what point, you know, are you getting to a point where you feel stabilized and we can start reducing 
the medication. So please don't think that it's a knock on medication. There's a, a every medication has its place. And um, thank goodness that we have it. And on the other side of that, when there are things missing in our bodies, when we're, when we're miserable, when we're in pain, when we're struggling, when we're fatigued, these are ways that our body is saying, hey, something isn't right here. I need you to pay attention to me. And so when I came out of the hospital, when I moved, when I got off the medications and I started um, I started noticing myself craving things that weren't, you know, cereal and <laughs> the foods that I was used to eating. And as I started to nourish my body a little bit better, and as I started moving my body and I decided to start with jogging. And let me tell you, I had to like crawl to the door many mornings. Like this wasn't like, Oh, I'm all like, I come to a lot of these things now with energy cause I have higher energy nowadays. And, um, and so, but I have that higher energy because I live in a way that supports me having high energy and I eat in a way that supports me having high energy. But most of the time, by the way, guys, I'm not like somebody who says you got to eat a hundred percent clean or, or anything like that. Or you got to do traditional exercise. You got to go to the gym seven days a week. That is not the message here, but there are ways to naturally holistically improve those chemicals that we need in order to help take the edge off. And you can start super teeny tiny small. Like you can, you don't have to change it. Right. Yeah. Uh, Kristen, what are, what are some teeny tiny things that you do when you start noticing yourself dip into that slump that might help you get some of those, get what you need? I have been in a slump for a long time. <laughs> And I've really been struggling with my nutrition. Mm. Um, like I said before, like I have food addiction and I've had it since I was a kid. I mean, like that's what I went to instead of like, you're, you're not eating. I eat way too much and I've been overweight all my life. And now I'm like becoming obese because I am so large and it affects you. It really affects you. And something like I've been trying to change it just so that um, I can live a better life and be healthier. Um, and even that's hard, like something like adding to drink more water instead of not only am I drinking more water, but instead of like popping things, I'll choose water and just drink more water throughout the day. You can add things to your water if you're not really into water. You can add some lemon or some berries. Um, even like cutting out something small, like putting out cookies. Or instead of buying a bag of cookies from the grocery store, you make your own cookies. With Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, with your significant other or with your kids, and then it's fun, too. Not only are you making your own cookies at home, which is a healthier choice, and you can use healthier things other than, like, wheat flour, mm -hmm. and it could be fun. It could be fun even if you're just doing it yourself. Put some music on, bake some cookies, your house will smell good, and you'll just feel good because, A, you did something, and, B, you get cookies. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that there is so much that people don't realize about um, how much micronutrients play a role in mental health and how much even gut health, now what we're understanding about gut health, plays a role in mental health. And I've had somebody tell me before, um, a family member no less, say, and she was talking about her child and she said, um, cause I was trying to help. I was talking about food. She was like, yes, it's not in his food. It's in his brain. Like what's <laughs> wrong with him is in his brain. And I'm like, yes, you're right. But what is the brain made of and how, like literally if you stop eating right now and don't have anything to eat, you will die because everything cannot function. Your body can't function without nutrition. So everything that we eat has to do with everything happening with our bodies, with our brains, with the way things are working. 
However, that doesn't mean because like you're saying, it's overwhelming, which by the way, remind me, I have an idea I want to chat with you about after this, um, just on that subject on what you just shared. But I, um, I just don't want to announce it here just in case you're like, that's a terrible idea. Kenny, we are not doing that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, but something we can do, but you know, you don't have to change. Like if, if you're somebody out there that's like, okay, yes, I have all these symptoms. I have depression. I am struggling. I can't even get out of my bed. What do you mean exercise? What do you mean make nutrient dense meals? Like I'm trying to like keep breathing here. Trust me when I say like, I get you on that. I know what it is to not be able to get up. I know what it is to like, the only thing keeping me alive was the fact that somebody else would have to find my body. Like I know what that is. And I lived that way for quite a while. And there were probably a couple of times when I had one of those waves come in where I, I sank into it again. And I probably should have reached out for a little bit more help than I did at the time. Now I know, I know I, I've gotten more accustomed now. So if I start noticing things slip, the first thing I do is look at my lifestyle. What am I not doing that I normally do? Like, what am I not doing? To nourish myself what am I not doing to take care of myself or what am I doing to hurt myself whatever it is um, normally for me it's movement there's this quote that I love it's what uh, movement is for well it's called is they say exercise I say movement the reason I say movement over exercise is a lot of people think exercise has to like they don't they think it has to be this traditional format of exercise and they're like that doesn't sound like any fun no you can put on rollerblades and go outside you can you know, hula hoop. I mean, you can jump on trampoline. Doesn't matter what you do. Just move your body. Like, feel good. If it feels good to dance, do that. Like, whatever. But um, it's exercises for the mind. What happens to the body? Anything that happens to the body is just a bonus. And I am telling you that one of the fastest ways that I was able to shift my my mental health was in consistent movement. Because you get the endorphins, you get the serotonin, you start to feel good. Normally, sweat. And on top of that, if you're doing anything outside, I like to call it like vitamin in, vitamin nature. Getting out in nature, um, walking barefoot on the beach or out in your backyard in the grass, laying on a hammock looking at the stars or, you know, do like what, and this is different for each person, but what makes you like feel kind of happy to be alive? Like what makes you feel good? If, is it cuddling up with a fur baby? Is it, you know, um, snuggling up with a significant other? Is it a really good, inspiring book and a hot cup of coffee or whatever? And, you know, and as far as nutrition, the more nutrient dense foods we eat, the better and the better our mental health, uh, our health across the board will be. And it's also looking at that stress factor, like, monitoring that so that we can go, okay, what can I add to my life that's going to reduce the stress or what can I take out of my life that says this isn't serving me? What am I consuming? Like what kind of shows am I watching? What kind of music am I listening to? Let me tell you, no freaking wonder. Like I love, like the music I've been listening to my whole life is I love all, and, and this is just because it's raw. Like for me, I've lived a lot of my life feeling very raw. So I connected with raw, vulnerable music and raw, vulnerable art and movies and really sad stuff is what I connected with most because it reflected something that I was feeling and that's natural. But if you're listening to only painful music day in and day out and only painful messages and only misery love, loves company, friends, and family. I mean, that stuff adds up. And when we're, when that's, you know, it, it becomes all consuming. So, um, so finding a place to go, what can I do? Because you can do something. And I think that's where we get lost, right? Like we get lost in thinking there's nothing I can do about it. I have mental health issues. End of story. Just like we say about any sort of chronic condition, endometriosis, anything. Here's my diagnosis. I'm broken. Can't be fixed. This is my life. And if that is what you want for yourself, that is your decision. You may do that. 
you know, and that's up to you. But it doesn't have to be that way. And you don't have to change everything overnight. And I think that's where people get stuck. That's at least where I got stuck. And truth be told, I think I was a little romantically involved with my pain. Like, I, I don't, have you ever experienced like, like, it's almost like it becomes so much of your identity that you're like, I don't know who the heck I am if I'm not broken. If I'm not sick, like who the heck am I then? Because this is how I've always been. And now I have a reason or a explanation for it. And so it's like, it's justified. I have an explanation and this is my life. And man, you get to live that way if you want, but you don't have to. And that's the exciting thing is you can do little teeny tiny steps every day. Like Kristen, what you were saying about, you know, drinking more water and, um, and doing something like adding berries or lemon or just something to, to dress it up. One of my favorite tricks is, uh, if you have, if you have any digestive issues, I don't normally recommend this. Um, but now and then I'll do like sparkling water with lemon or lime just to make it like fancy. It feels like I'm drinking a little cocktail, you know, it's, it's, it's got a little, it's got, I'm a big fan of a uh, Topo Chico, which is a little, um, uh, do you guys have Topo Chico out there? No. I don't know what that is. It's just, it's a sparkling water brand. They'll do like twist a lime sometimes or whatever, but they've got what there's LaCroix sparkling water and Perrier or whatever, but <laughs> there's tons of them. Sometimes you can do that to fancy it up or, um, and you know, it doesn't have to be water and it does just like, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to go do this extreme crazy exercising either. You could go for a walk after dinner if the weather's nice. Or go for, I mean, how long, how long has it been since you've actually gone out and played in the rain or gone on a walk in the rain? Or for those of you who jog a jog in the rain, like, um, there's nothing that makes me feel a little like, like just so happy to be able to jog in the rain like that. If I'm jogging and it starts, yeah. I'm like kid in the candy store. And the last time I did that, I will admit to be fair to me, let me just give you this little disclaimer here or whatever to be fair to me. I was like halfway around like our neighborhood loop. So it would have been the same if I'd turn around and come back or kept going. So I am like happy as can be carefree. It's pouring down rain. I can't see. There is thunder and lightning. So of course here comes my husband <laughs> honking at me. <laughs> he came out to rescue me. I'm drenched. Uh, it was pretty ridiculous. And I'll <laughs> Um, he looked at me like I was crazy and I was like, you didn't have to come get me. He was like, what? So you get struck by lightning and die. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but for me, like I probably could have just laid down and like just closed my eyes and been just happy as can be out in the rain like that. And so that's not the same for everybody. Some of you probably don't want to set foot outside your door if it's raining. And I totally get that. But what is it for you? Like, do you need to go ride a roller coaster or do you need to just go swing on a swing set? Do you need to go, do you need to get down on the floor and play with your kids? Do you need to go play with your animals and go, you know, go somewhere where you can take them off leash or do you need to, I mean, just like, what is a thing? Like what's your, what's your last joyful memory or most recent one? And what is something you could go do or what's something you're willing to do to help you get more serotonin. And one of the easiest ones is getting some sunshine. Like 15 minutes a day is all you need. You don't need a whole lot. And just getting sun on your skin and absorbing that a little bit, that helps your serotonin level. A comedy, hello. Like if you wanna just sit and Netflix it or whatever, you can watch a comedy series or something that makes you laugh, something that you don't have to be serious about it. You don't have to try to change everything. You don't have to be somebody that you're not. Um, but better is possible. And I know I say that a lot, but I think that's just my message in life that better is possible. So yeah, it's, you know, it's fair for you to honor what you need when you're like, you know what, I need to take a nice hot bath. Maybe I'll play some music and I am going to take a really long nap because I need a nap. And it's also fair for you to say, okay, I allowed myself this space and now I'm going to go get up and do a thing. I don't necessarily want to do it, but I know that I, I know it's going to feed the part of my brain that needs nourishment right now. It's going to give me serotonin. 
going to give me a little bit of dopamine. Um, it's going to give me, it's going to give me something to help my brain. And then if you just do that consistently over time, you will take the edge off of it and you will naturally and holistically be able to support. Or if you're on medication, but your goal is in 12 months, I'd like to not need it anymore. Fan freaking tastic. You can do the same thing to support yourself naturally so that your body can can um, function the way that it's meant to because your body knows what it's doing and it knows how to how to um, it knows what you need is what I should say it knows what you need so so yeah pick a thing or two pick a couple of things Kristen is there anything you'd like to add no I totally agree I think um, something that I yeah so definitely nature go in nature, the sun, movement. You can couple those two and go for a walk in the sun in nature. Mm -hmm. um, self-care, really important. We say this almost every time I feel, but self-care. Mm -hmm. no, no one gets anything until you are cared for. And do things that make you happy, whatever it is. Read a book, watch a movie, go for a walk, go for a swim, whatever makes you feel good and joyful. And like you said, can be happy to be alive. And really, really beware of the energy around you. Mm -hmm. Who you live with, who you hang out with, who you work with. When you look into that and look into the people around you, you can really, I feel, nail down what it is that is triggering you. So like say if your spouse is always coming home a grump from work and you feel that depression from that job from your spouse or at work there's a really annoying dude who is really racist and sexist and blah, 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 and you can't stand him. Maybe you saw him that day and that's why you're feeling like that or whatever it is. Just be in tune with others around you and how you feel around them. Like I can, I am definitely sensitive to energies and when someone is in a bad mood or something I'm I literally will first I'll feel sorry for them because they're in a bad mood then I'll try and make them feel better and if that doesn't work then I'll just be in a bad mood too <laughs> so you really just be aware and be mindful of whatever situation you're in and generally that will link back to why am I feeling depressed or anxious or whatever it is and if you want to reach out and you should always reach out to someone if you want to reach out to a third party who doesn't necessarily know you we have our groups we have the website you can email us message us or just say hi like you don't even need to say I'm depressed I want to talk about it. You can just start a conversation with us. Start a conversation at all. I can guarantee you that someone is feeling the same way that you do. And it's hard. No one wants to feel shitty. Yeah. We're, we're in it together. Yeah, I love, I so love that you brought up the energy piece because a lot of times we don't realize how susceptible that energy is and so if it kind of goes back to what you're consuming if it's like around you all the time being aware of it is key so if you start noticing that here are these people that i'm i tend that tend to be in my vicinity and this goes kind of into that misery loves company place where it's like it's like you you sometimes will lower your energy to match them or 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 you just take theirs on and you can just feel it and and you may what this tends to feel like is um you know for those of you who maybe aren't as familiar or if any of you are like what the heck are they talking about you know energy 
you have experiences in one way or another when you've been around somebody who's like super like light and airy and bright and just being around them like you just want to be around them because it just feels good and then there's been somebody in your life that you're like oh. <laughs> it's like heavy almost to be around them it that's exactly what it is and so when you're with those people at work that are complaining all the time it doesn't mean you have to quit your job I mean you can begin to protect your own energy and your own space and realize I'm gonna be so this is something that I've been really actively working on like I am gonna be so full of joy and gratitude and abundance that no matter what is coming at me it's gonna just like deflect not because I'm insensitive. I'm the most empathetic person in the world and I love, and I'm compassionate and I love people and I want to help people obviously because I do this, the work that I do like that. It's, but your energy is worth protecting. It makes me think of a book called, um, energy vampires actually by Dr. Uh, Christian Northrup. And she talks a lot about this. She also does a fabulous book. It's a little bit off topic, but it's not, um, called, do I have it right here? Called, um, women's bodies, women's wisdom. So for those of you watching the video, I'm going to hold it up here. It's, uh, Christian Northrup, women's bodies, women's wisdom. Now <laughs> it looks very intimidating. This is a huge book, but this is every, like, it's kind of like female, Bible like like there are photos in here of your reproductive organs ladies. She does talk about endo She does talk about um, nutrition. Anyway, she's fantastic. Love her um, But she wrote a book about she's an OB and And she's she got frustrated because she started recognizing the amount of um, she basically made all these connections scientifically between energy and these diseases that show up in female bodies and unprocessed emotions and things like that. And, um, it's fascinating. And this is a lot of where my healing has come from. Not that book per se, as much as the exploration of what was happening for me. And so this can happen with, um, with depression as well as it can happen with endo, our energy and our, unprocessed emotion and all that junk that we kind of like store and bury in our body that doesn't get expressed, that doesn't get processed, that doesn't get, uh, that we don't get to the root of over a period of time. I mean, we can measure that stuff. We can measure thoughts. We can measure, you know, energy, that stuff manifests. It manifests into physical stressors. It manifests. And that's what most of our bodies like processes. Like that's what our body's trying to deal with. Um, so it robs things from us, which is, which is why, you know, it's kind of like talking about not getting enough of the chemicals that we need for our brain. So it's really interesting. And maybe in future episodes, we can go a little bit more into energy. I know sometimes, you know, that sounds a little bit out there for a lot of people. And I completely understand that, but I will say some of the biggest progress I've ever made with my pain has had more to do with what I was doing, um, energy wise and the willingness in my own personal healing journey to communicate with my body and figure out what the heck is happening here. And as those things came up and I processed it, the physical side got so much easier for me to manage. So, um, anyway, went off into a little bit of, rat of a rabbit hole there. I just love that you brought that up because, um, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely correct that, that energy piece. So where are you getting your energy from? Because here's the thing, you're in control of it. It doesn't feel that way. I know it doesn't feel that way, especially when you're so used to allowing it being controlled by whatever is around in life. And we just feel like, well, this is my life though. Like, what are you talking about? I can control it. Well, there's a whole lot we can't control. I'm not trying to say you can control everything, but you can control your attitude and your energy. And it's okay. Like, I was telling, Kristen and I were talking right before we came on. I was telling her, I was like, God, it's dreary. It's been raining for the past, you know, two days. And I'm a little like sluggish and I kind of just want to be like, you know, horizontal. <laughs> yes. I don't want to be late, you know, and after yes. what I'm going to do, I'm going to go downstairs and relax with my husband on the couch. And other than dinner, which I don't even know, I think he's making dinner and you know what? Fan freaking tastic. <laughs> because so you know there's nothing wrong so 
for those of you ladies who are currently experiencing chronic depression, a bout of depression, if you've been in and out of these waves for years, we hear you and we feel you and we just want to send you so much love and support. And we hope that a couple of these little tiny tips, and by the way, go back and look at episode eight, which was the, right? That was eight that we did self-care. I believe so. Yeah. Pretty sure episode eight, we went through like an hour of self-care. So if you're like, ladies, I don't even know where to start. Go to episode eight, watch it on self-care, pick one thing and just start there. Just start there. And as always, if, if you have anything that you would like for us to cover, if you have questions or concerns, reach out to Kristen directly, reach out to myself directly. Um, you can find Kristen at endometriosis and me, the website, the page, the group, <laughs> she's everywhere. So you can find her. Um, and you can reach me directly on Facebook. If you want, you can reach me at Kenny Rochelle coaching on Facebook. Um, and then also we have, uh, my closed group as well. Endometriosis, nourish, flourish, thrive. So we're here for you. Let us know if there's topics that you'd like for us to cover. Let us know if, um, if we gave you a tip or a suggestion and you're like, that was the worst thing ever, reach out to us and let us know so that we can help you with what you need help with because we are here for you. So thank you so much for being with us again, ladies. We love you to pieces. And also thank you for being here. Any of you that may um, be an endo supporter and you're just here to learn more and love on your, your endo warrior. So we appreciate each and every one of you and we will see you next week. Bye guys.